Should Amazon be blamed for the Capital One data breach, Adobe Creative Cloud users' data was exposed, and a remote code execution attack is being used in the wild. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 29th, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you are interested in supporting ThreatWire on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash threatwire. It's because of the generosity of the people that watch this show that I'm able to make it every single week. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. And now, on to the news. Chosen by my patrons this week is some updates on the Capital One data breach. Senator Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat, Democrat of Massachusetts and Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat of Oregon, are going to federal regulators with questions about Amazon's cloud computing involvement in the Capital One data breach that affected more than 100 million people. They are taking these questions to the Federal Trade Commission to find out if Amazon Web Services, aka AWS, knew about server-side request forgery attack techniques and yet did nothing to protect against it. Now, while Capital One stated that they rely on AWS as a means to modernize, the practice is scrutinized since the brand is a financial company relying on a cloud platform. According to Warren and Wyden's letter, which was sent on Thursday to the FTC, Amazon competitors knew of the possibility of an SSRF attack and remediation, including Google since 2013 and Microsoft since 2017, but Amazon failed to protect against it. They believe that this could have violated federal law since companies have an obligation to act on third-party reports of cybersecurity vulnerabilities. The letter explains that Amazon knew of these attacks since at least 2018, when a cybersecurity expert emailed Amazon's InfoSec team recommending defenses against SSRF attacks. Now, AWS replied to the letter with a statement saying that the claims were baseless from opportunistic politicians. The full letter is linked below via CNET, and I will provide updates if the FTC acts on this information. Adobe left an Elasticsearch database connected online with without a password, leading to the exposing of 7.5 million Creative Cloud customer details. Creative Cloud is a subscription service used by creators with access to products such as Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, After Effects, and a lot more. Data exposed included email addresses, account creation date, Adobe products subscribed to, subscription status, payment status, member ID, country of origin, time since last login, and Adobe employee status. No financial information information or passwords were exposed. The data was found on October 19th by Bob Dyashenko, a security researcher from Security Discovery, and Paul Bischoff, tech journalist for Comparatech. They notified Adobe and the company secured their data the same day. Adobe later posted a public bulletin about the data on October 25th. It's unknown how long the data was actually online, though. Now, Adobe concluded that this leak was due to a misconfiguration of a prototype environment, and it was not in connection to any core products or services. Since Adobe has somewhere between 12 to 15 million Creative Cloud users, and this affected 7.5 million users, that means it affected about half of paying subscribers. Now, while the data leaked is minimal, the information could have been obtained by an attacker or downloaded without Adobe knowing, and this could lead to spear phishing attacks since it did include email addresses. So scrutinize any emails sent from addresses purportedly owned by Adobe, and make sure that you set up two-factor authentication on your Creative Cloud account if you have not done so already. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I am putting together the annual physical rewards for this year, so keep an eye on the updates on the Patreon page. Also, I want to start a security and privacy audio podcast as a part of the ThreatWire feed. So that is my next Patreon goal. So if you want to help, check out my community. The link is in the description below. And when you sign up, you will automatically get a physical reward after your first year of membership and every year thereafter on certain perk levels. Also, a big thanks to our Hush Puppy perk level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them, so keep them coming. 
A remote code execution, or RCE, attack has been targeting PHP 7 instances on servers running Engine X with PHP FPM enabled. The vulnerability with CVE 2019-11043 wouldn't allow an attacker to run commands on a server just by going to a specific URL, which means it's easy enough to do that no technical background is necessary. The attack is currently being used in the wild to take over servers. Now, PHP is is the most common language used for coding websites, and this vulnerability's proof of concept was posted on GitHub. To work, an attacker would need to target and query a web server to identify if it was running the vulnerable code. Once found to be vulnerable, the attacker could add a question mark A equals to the URL in a specifically crafted request to take advantage of the RCE. Now, this issue was first discovered by Andrew Danau, a security researcher at Wallarm, who was hunting for bugs during a CTF or a capture the flag competition. Now, PHP FPM means Fast CGI Process Manager and is an alternative to PHP Fast CGI implementations, but it comes with extra features. Nginx does not necessarily come with PHP FPM installed, as it's usually added by a web admin or the hosting provider. The newest versions of PHP, including 7.3.11 and 7.2.24, both include the patch for this vulnerability. Now, since the proof of concept was published and it is being used in the wild, and a patch is available, website owners are advised to update as soon as possible if you can, or switch over to another CGI product. Processor. Now, before I leave, I wanted to say thank you so very much to Andre, Mitchell, Bogdan, Grant, Lisa, Nathaniel, Orlando, and Frank, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much. Y'all are all awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.